Hi friends, I'm Amy and this is A Star Reads and it's time for the game of a bookish life. I look forward to this video all the time. Even though I'm doing it bi-monthly now, I still get so excited when I get to play my game, get to put this video together. It's just a fun video to edit and I always have a good time seeing what's going to happen next. What are the next two months going to hold for me? And will I be able to do it? <laughs> That's always a very interesting question. So if you've never seen one of my game videos, I would recommend checking out my January video where I specifically talk about all the rules and all the ways that I have changed this game over the I think this is my third year of playing this game. And I will link that up here so you can go check it out. There are a lot of rules and aspects to my game that might be confusing if you don't know how it's played because I don't really talk about rules and stuff within this video. I may give a little bit of an idea, but I really try not to go over that because there's just too much, there's too much. So like I said, I will link that up here. Please go check it out if you're really curious. And also there's a playlist in the description box down below if you wanna go look at some of my previous videos. I always like going and looking at TBR game videos. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to binge watch them. How did my reading go in May and June? <laughs> Well, as you may have noticed, I didn't have any TBR video in June. I do my game every other month, but then I at least try to do a regular TBR video on the non-game months. And I didn't do that in June because May and June were tough and my reading was not great. June is still going on. We're still in June. And actually reading in June has gotten better. But it was the end of school year and I had a lot of things going on because it was my last college courses I was finishing and all the projects were happening at the same time. And then in June, I actually was within the classroom with the students full time for the majority of that time. So like I was spending a lot of time with the students, which was great and it was wonderful because then now they're going off to sixth grade. However, it meant that my reading kind of suffered a little bit for that. Plus, I'm doing a whole bunch of projects, like book two projects, video projects, including, if you have not seen it, my Book Love is Blind project, which I'm totally in love with. It's so much fun. Even though I did a lot of reading for that, it did not equate to finished books. <laughs> so if you want to know more about that series, I'll put the playlist right up here. So then let's talk about the books that were on my last TBR game for the months of May and June and see how I did. I will tell you in advance, I am taking four punishments. <laughs> I probably should take five, but I think that considering how busy May and June were, four is enough. <laughs> Four is absolutely enough. The first book I was supposed to read was The Good Master by Kate Sarity, and I did read this one. I finished one of them. Yay! The second one I was supposed to read is You're Invited by Amanda J. Atisa. This is a thriller that I was really excited about because I don't get to read thrillers often enough, and I didn't get to read this one, so <laughs> it was very sad. But this one's probably not going to make its way back onto my TBR at the moment just because of all the books I'm currently reading and what I expect to be reading in July. Book number three was The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro and I did not read this one, did not start it. However, I will be carrying this one over because it's the book that I'm supposed to read for my journey through Aldea. For spin number four, I actually got a secret TBR book and I did read a secret TBR book. I read Cinnamon and Gum Powder by Eli Brown and I did an amazing vlog that I absolutely loved. It was such a fun vlog to make and then to edit and I hope it's a fun vlog to watch so I will link it up here so you get a chance to watch it and learn about this amazing book that I think more people should know about I just don't think enough people know about it. Spin number five brought me to A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. This is the first book in the Veronica Speedwell mystery series and I actually ended up picking up this copy which I really enjoy. I did not read this taking another punishment. <laughs> it's my third punishment and I don't think I'm going to be able to carry this one over. I really want to get into the series, but it just doesn't look like it's going to happen right now. Mom's over there crying right now. She's sad. I know I am too. Spin number six was to do a try a chapter and a coffee. And I did not have time to do one of these. It was so busy these last couple of months, like did not have the free time. And when I did have the free time to do it, I was so worn out that I just was like, I can't do anything. So it didn't happen. However, I'm going to kind of roll this over. I'm not going to take a punishment for it because I think I will be able to do a try a chapter in the coffee within the next month. I hope I will be able to. I'm going to try. And I do have plans. Like I already do have books picked out for this and I already have a coffee shop that I want to go to. So it's just a matter of taking the time, taking a few hours to go and sit down and read the first chapters of these books. And if you haven't checked out my try a chapter in a coffee, I will also link that one up here. It 
is a fun series. It's a fun way to check out some of the older books that I have that I may not be interested in and then unhauling them right away if I find out that I'm not. But then also be able to keep the ones that I'm like, okay, actually, maybe I am interested and try to get to them sooner rather than later. Spin number seven was On the Edge of Gone by Corinne Duivis. 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 Um, I still don't know how to say that name, that last name. But this one I did not read and did not start. I really do want to get to this one, so I'd like to say that I'm going to roll it over. I kind of hope I can get to it. Just one of those fun YA sci-fis that well, we'll see. We'll see. And then finally for spin number eight, because I ended up getting a lot of extra spins this last two month period, The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. And I did not read this one either. <laughs> and I was hoping I would be able to get it done before the end of the month. But then I just started a really big project that's gonna take almost all of my time. I'm only taking four punishments though, because I'm gonna be carrying over remains of the day and because I just think, you know, Amy, give yourself a break. So that means because the way my punishments work is that for the first four spins that I do, I will be moving backwards on the board as opposed to forwards. And when it comes to my green spots, there's either an option of a regular mode or challenge mode. And so my game will be put in challenge mode. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the game. I will show you what my spin tellies are first, and then we will do spin number one. It's time to find out what prompts I'm gonna get this month. And before I go into my spins, I wanted to tell you what my tallies were at currently. Looks like we're in trouble if I land on a four because a four has four tallies on it. Then I've got three tallies each on one, six, and eight, two tallies each on five and seven, and then one tally on two. So if I land on nine and 10, I'm looking pretty good, which I often land on nine and 10. So let's hope that continues this time around. When I played last time, I landed on the little free library book spot, and that's where I'm gonna be starting. Unfortunately, for the first four spins, and mind you, I do six spins total unless I get extras, I will be moving backwards on the board as my punishment. Also, whenever I land on a green spot, I will have to do the challenge portion of that prompt. Let's see, we're gonna go for spin number one. Okay, the board's moving. Nice big spin, nine, exactly what I wanted. Okay, that's a long ways to go back though. Oh no, which way am I gonna go? So I'm gonna spin and if I spin one through five, I'm gonna go to the right. If I, that's the left. If I spin one through five, I'm gonna go to the left. If I spin six through 10, I'm gonna go to the right. So let's see which direction. I'm gonna go to the right. One through five to the left, six through 10 to the right. That's right, okay. It's a little backwards. Okay, so I'm moving nine spaces though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A genre spinner wheel. Okay, let's see what genre I will be reading from. That is a dark orange. Dark orange is adult fiction. So for the purposes of the way I like to play my game, adult fiction is literary, contemporary, or historical fiction. It's time for spin number one. And the game is already starting off pretty easy because it's giving me the option of a adult fiction. So as I mentioned before, for the purposes of my game, I usually choose a historical fiction, literary fiction, or contemporary fiction for this one. And in this instance, I'm going with historical fiction. I'm gonna be reading The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. I think. <laughs> it's a big book. I'm hoping. Now remember, these rolls will go for both July and August. So if I don't get to it in July, I can get to it in August. This is actually my first book by Kristen Hanna. I haven't read anything by Kristen Hanna. I'm a very well-known, well-loved historical fiction author. And I have heard great things about this book. This is set in 1974, and it's about this man named Ernt and his family. He became a prisoner of war during the Vietnam War. And so he is struggling with so much, so much trauma, so many things that have affected his life ever since the war and ever since he's been released. And it has affected his family, it's affected his jobs, he can't keep a job. And finally, in an effort to try and I guess change his life, he takes his family and they move to Alaska where they decide they're gonna live off grid. And of course, he is still struggling, but his wife and his child need to figure out how they can all survive this new life when they hit one of the worst winters ever and they are stuck out in the woods in the snow alone. So it sounds harrowing. It sounds amazing. And I know that Kristen Hanna is one of those authors that makes everybody cry. So I think I'm ready for it. So let's see what's gonna happen with spin number two. Two. 
two is safe. One, two. Animal on the cover or in the title, and because it has an orange box around it, it's based on the genre. So this is light orange adult fantasy. So it has to be an adult fantasy that has an animal on the cover or in the title of the book name. Spin number two, animal on the cover or in the title, and this needs to be an adult fantasy. And so I am picking a book that was gifted to me. In fact, well, it was gifted to me, but I got to pick it myself. <laughs> And it was given to me by my great friend Magda. And Magda is someone who I do spins for every month. And she has asked me if I'd like to, to share those spins on here, if people would like more gameplay. So I always include this at the end of my video, if you'd like to see those stick around. And the book I'm choosing for this is All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Anders, because it has all these amazing little swallows on it. I think it's a really pretty cover and it says birds. So it works in two ways. So I'm really interested in reading from this author because Charlie Jane Anders is a transgender author and I wanna make sure that I am supporting this community at a time, at all times, but especially at a time when they need a lot more mainstream support and recognition. And also I have heard that her sci-fi slash fantasy is always very, off the wall and strange. And I am very interested to see if I'm gonna enjoy off the wall strange sci-fi because I think I will. This is actually more fantasy than sci-fi because it does involve a witch and a mad scientist, but I'm very excited to see what Charlie Jane Anders writing is like. We have these two characters, this witch and this mad scientist that were best friends for the longest time. And in middle school, for some reason, something happened to divide their friendship. And they have not spoken to each other for many, many years. But somehow as adults, they come back together and they have to work together to save the earth, destroy the earth. I'm not sure exactly what happens, but something happens between these two and their friendship and what they're really good at, being a witch versus being this mad scientist. I can't wait to find out more about this. I don't really understand what it's all about, but that's why I'm planning on reading it. Still moving backwards for spin number three. 10. 10 is always a secret TBR book. So even though I'll be moving back 10 spaces, I just get to choose whatever secret TBR book I wanna choose for this one. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And this spot doesn't matter because it's a secret TBR book. Spin number three, you're not gonna get to know about because it's a secret TBR book. But this is great for me because I have another project I want to work on. And I have a feeling that you all will be very excited about it as well. But to give you a little peek, there, there's the book. <laughs> That's all you get to see. <laughs> hey, it's Editing Amy here. Uh, I just wanted to say, <laughs> because I know some of the more clever of us out there will have noticed that I wasn't very careful with my secret TBR book uh, before <laughs> sharing it. So if you saw it, then you know what it is, but I'm not gonna say anything more about it. I'm just gonna say that, yes, you're right. I, I did have it just sitting right there so you could see it. All right, so for our fourth and final backwards spin, after this, I still have more spins, but I get to move forward. Let's see where I'm gonna go. One, I'm not gonna go very far. Okay, an award winner. So this is a book that has won some type of award, any kind of bookish award, and it has an orange box around it, which means that it depends on the genre or type of book. And we've got middle grade. So yellow is a middle grade because this is a yellow spot. So it's a middle grade book that has won some type of award. Oh, I can definitely do that. Spin number four, an award-winning middle grade. So for this one, I recently picked up this book and I have been dying to read it. And I'm gonna get to it sooner rather than later. That doesn't happen when I buy books. They usually sit on my shelves for years. <laughs> I'm gonna be reading When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller. And this won the Newbery Award as well as the Asian and Pacific American Award for Children's Literature. So super excited, super excited about this one. I have heard only good things. I have not heard one person say a bad thing about this book. And I'm hoping that once I read it, it'll be one of those books where I'm like, this is one I wanna share with my students every year. And I get to choose, of course, what books that I read aloud to my students. And I'm hoping this will be one of them. And this is a story about a young girl named Lily and her and her family have moved in with her Helmoni, her grandmother, and she's not doing well. She's not healthy. Her grandmother tells her this Korean tale of a tiger. And it turns out that 
Tigers are really angry with her grandmother because she took something from them. And Lily has to make a deal with these tigers, but the resulting trade could cost her grandmother's health. And so that is what the story is about. So I imagine there's a lot about grief in here and it just looks so beautiful. And I have heard that it is beautiful as far as the reading goes. So I'm really looking forward to this and it's a nice little one. So hopefully that'll work. <laughs> That does put four tallies on number one. So if I get number one again, I could be in trouble. All right, now I'm gonna be moving forward. Finally, I get to move forward for spin number five. 10 again, another secret TBR book. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Let me move forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 right there. All right, spin number five. Now I know it's not as exciting for you when I get these because you don't get to see what book it is, but it's exciting for me because then I know that I will get to this video and it'll be part of the same video. So here is a sneak peek. That's all you're getting, maybe a little color. Oop, well, that won't tell you anything. <laughs> and finally, spin number six. Three. Three is safe, woo -hoo -hoo. Three, okay. One, two, okay. So I have to figure it out if I'm gonna go to the left or to the right. One through five means I go left. Six through 10 means I go right. Right, okay. One, two, three. TBR shelves, random. Oh, that's kind of fun. I like that. And it's based on genre. So purple is classics, so I have to pick randomly from my classics TBR. <laughs> okay, maybe that's not as exciting as I thought it was gonna be. Spin number six. It was all going too well. Of course I was gonna mess up somewhere, right? <laughs> I've been doing pretty well lately. However, I did well overall, and there's definitely no extra spins, like all that is fine. So yes, I was supposed to randomize one of my TBR shelves, and yes, I was definitely supposed to go to the right, all that was good. The problem is that that prompt is lined by orange, which means that I'm supposed to pick the genre that I initially landed on. And I initially landed on three, which is dark orange, which would have been an adult fiction. However, I chose purple because that's what I landed on after deciding which direction I was gonna go. And so I chose a classic and I'm actually gonna stick with it. I'm gonna stick with classics even though it should have been adult fiction because I've already figured out how this book will work for my challenges. And I think I'm just, I'm, I'm fine with this. Let's just go with this. <laughs> Let's just give me this one because I don't wanna have to figure all this stuff out again. So here I'm gonna show you a little video of me randomizing the book off my classics shelf. Okay, so here's my classic shelf and there's a couple that I probably won't pick like that recipe of all nations and maybe even Dracula because I've read Dracula before but if I pick one of the ones that has like play in it or just works of I might just read a selection of those not the whole book let's see how many I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen I'm not gonna count that cracker seventeen eighteen this goes with that nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six 27, Okay, so let's see what I'm gonna get. One through 39, I'm getting 14. Okay, so that's gonna be over here. And let's see what that is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Life on the Mississippi by Mark Twain. Don't mind the dust, don't look at it, it's not there. And as you saw, Life on the Mississippi by Mark Twain is the one that came up. And this is actually nonfiction. I guess I didn't realize that. I, I should have known it and I think I have read about it before but I completely forgot. This is all about Mark Twain's own experiences when he first started working on steamboats. So this book and mostly his own experiences are what encouraged him to write The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, one of his most famous works. So I'm very excited to find out what his experiences were like. I imagine there will be some problematic elements based on when this was written. I've always been very interested in the whole steamboat era of the Mississippi. So I'm very excited about this one. I also like these kind of slice of life, learning how people lived at those times sort of books. So that's kind of also why I didn't want to change. <laughs> like actually looking forward to this. So that's it for my TBR game. The game was really nice to me this time around. I don't know why, because it's summertime, it should 
give me some challenges. However, I have plenty of challenges I've been giving myself this summer and the game probably knew that. It was like, Amy, you gotta take a break. You're just doing too much. <laughs> so of course, if you wanna know how your journey of the game of bookish life is gonna continue, stick around because that's gonna happen towards the end. And if you want to skip my challenges and finding out about my buddy reads, you can always look at the timestamps in the description box. I always timestamp this particular video. So if you're only looking for gameplay, feel free to skip ahead and see where you're gonna go next on your own journey. So one of the things I incorporated onto my TBRs every month, well, the intention was to be every month this year, to try and help me get through some of my physical TBR books that I haven't thought about in a while, was this incredible massive TBR wheel that I created that has all the books on my physical TBR. I am pretty good at clearing it off and putting new books on when I first get them. It isn't completely accurate, but I'm trying. I'm trying as much as I can. There's a lot of books on here, over 400. What I had hoped was that I would spin for two books each month, and in that month I would try and incorporate those two books into my TBR. Now, has it been the most successful? No, but it has given me options of books that I can read each month that I would like to get to. And it reminds me what I have on my shelves. So in recent months, I was supposed to read The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He and The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. And as you can imagine, because my reading has been a bit of a struggle in the last few months, these haven't happened. However, I'm gonna roll these over. I'm carrying them over because I still really do want to get to these if I can. And there may be opportunities that come up in this month with different challenges, which will allow me to read these. I don't know for sure, but I do want to read them. And because I am a glutton for punishment and I like to make things interesting and I like to spin my wheel, I'm going to spin it twice this month anyways, <laughs> even though there's probably no way I can actually read any of these. So let's see where we're going to go with spin number one. is a very interesting one. Okay, so Chicken a la King, The Buffalo Wing by Stephen Gilber. This is the food names and the people and places that inspired them. And this is a nonfiction book. It's kind of like a trivia book about food. Now, I really love food. I did go to culinary school, so I have a lot of knowledge of food. And I am very fascinated about food history. I also like scientific history. I can't imagine this is going to be one of those books that I want to pick up and just read straight through. It'll probably be fun to just read little bits and pieces of it here and there throughout the month. And so, yeah, because look, it's got just like these little these little sections. It didn't get the greatest reviews, but it might just be because the type of book it is. It's more of a coffee table book. I was curious, so we'll see what I think about it. Let's see what we're gonna get for spin number two. Wow, okay. That is incredible. The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodore Goss. And I'll tell you why this is incredible in a minute. I'm gonna hold off and not tell you about this book until I talk about my buddy reads this month. Because <laughs> this was perfect. I don't know how that happened, that was magic. So let us talk about my buddy reads here in the month of July. First, we'll talk about The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodore Goss, because I actually had plans to start this series this month with Paige from Pages with Paige, and it's also a side quest for bookstar read-alongs. So I can't believe that it came up on my giant wheel with 400 plus books on there. And I'm so happy it did because I know this one will get read. I will actually be reading one of the books off that wheel. <laughs> It's pretty exciting. So this is a YA fantasy about a young woman named Mary Jekyll and her father was killed at some point, her father and her mother, I think they both were killed. And the only person she thinks knows information or has information on this is Mr. Hyde. And if she can capture Mr. Hyde or find out where he is, she can also make money off of his capture. And so she goes on a quest to find him, I think. And she meets this group of other women who've been created by these famous mad scientists or, you know, like Frankenstein, or the, the daughter of Frankenstein or the creation of Frankenstein, all these different girls that have been created by these scientists is what I think. And there's also Sherlock Holmes in here. It's just a really interesting sounding reimagining. I've heard amazing things. Mom read it. There was a couple of aspects she wasn't crazy about, but overall she really liked the story a lot. So 
I'm thrilled and I can't wait to read this with Paige as well as our bookstar group. So if you would like to read this with us, please join us. We have a side quest chat channel going on our bookstar read alongs group. I will link the discord in the description box down below and we will be reading the whole series. So we're going to read the next book in August and the third book in September. So we'll be getting through this series. If you're looking to finish a series in the next three months, come join us. Another buddy read that I have actually started and I'm hoping to get back on track with is The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. I'm reading this with Mary Jo Hedrick and we both got so busy over May and June that this did not continue. I'm about that far in and I've been really enjoying this. When I actually was able to pick it up, I was enjoying it a lot as I expected to because I am a Steinbeck fangirl. But I would like to get back to our actual discussions about it. So I'm hoping that in this next month, I can continue this after I finish some of the other buddy reads I'm currently doing. And then for Bookstar Read-Alongs, our current read-along series is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. And we're going to be on book three, The Song Rising. This one's not as big as the other ones. Otherwise, maybe the writing, oh, it is smaller. <laughs> oh, it's smaller. <laughs> Okay, so I can't talk to you too much about this series because we're on the third book and so many things happen in this. There are like these big drastic twists and turns that happen in the first book and then again in the second book. And I wasn't as fond of the second book as I was the first book. But the way the second book ended, and of course the second half of the second book, was really exciting. So I'm ready to find out what happens next. And this is about a girl named Paige who is a clairvoyant, and she lives among all these clairvoyants who are considered illegal and are not allowed to really exist in this world by the scion, which are the regular people who are non-clairvoyant. Throughout this series we start realizing that not everything is as it seems. However, it's still very dangerous to be clairvoyant. So. I have been enjoying this magic. It's a very unique magic style because of the clairvoyance and it's all based on like these dreamscapes and there's a lot of poltergeists and ghosts and stuff like that in this series. So it's a very interesting series. It's very unique the way it's written. I feel like it's very complex in a lot of ways and sometimes the choices that are made are not my favorite but they're somebody else's favorite and then we also found that vice versa some of the people who didn't like the first book as much which I really enjoyed really liked the second book so there's a little bit of something in here for for most people it is very intriguing and Samantha Shannon writes incredible action scenes I think her action scenes are really good so I'm looking forward to seeing as things are continuing to build what's going to happen next bookstar read-alongs is hosted by Paige from Page of the Page Danielle from Bookara and myself and we have been having such a great time with this. We try to do read-alongs every year. Last year we did two. This year we're doing only one, but we do have side quests, as I said with The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter. And I will link everything you need to know in the description box below. It's never too late to join us, or you can even join us if you've already read the series and just want to discuss the books with us. We would love to have you. Now it's time to talk about my challenges, and I do certain challenges that I try to do every single month. Some of them are created by other booktubers, like Buzzwordathon, and then some of them are of my own creation. So <laughs> let's talk about those. First, we'll talk about Buzzwordathon, which is a challenge that was created by Kayla from Books and Lala. She doesn't do a readathon for this series anymore, but she has like a prompt that you can choose how to use every month. So the prompt for the month of July is actually weather-related words. And one of the words she said you could use was sky. So I'm using all the birds in the sky because sky is weather adjacent, you know? You have to have a sky to have weather. So <laughs> I think this counts. Next, I want to talk about TBR Knockout, and this is a challenge hosted by Melanie from Completely Melanie. It's every month there are two prompts, and with these, the intention is to try and get books off your physical TBR shelf. So I only pick books that are actually on my shelves for this one. The theme for this month is Summertime Blues, and the first prompt is a book with blue on the cover. So I'm going with All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Anders, because it's got quite a bit of blue, some blue there, and I think it's got little, oh, there are little stars. I didn't realize they were stars. That's cute. I do like this cover a lot. I think that's really pretty. And then the second prompt, because Summertime Blues, a book that is going to make you cry, a book that you believe will make you cry. And I do believe that The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna is gonna make me cry. I imagine this will, because there's a lot of heavy topics in this and it's set in a situation where the stakes become really dire. So I am picking this for that. My scratch board challenge, I wanted to scratch off one of these a month for the whole year. Haven't quite got there. <laughs> And there are two on here that I still haven't scratched off, but I promise that will happen. I'll do that in an upcoming vlog. And the book that I have started that is for my scratch board that I haven't finished is Graves of Wrath. This is on here. So 
once I get this finished, I will also be able to scratch it off this scratch board. Another one of my challenges for this year was to try and read more gifted books, books that were given to me because I have been gifted a lot of wonderful books and I don't always prioritize the way I need to. So this year I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to get to some of these books that people have generously given to me. So as I had mentioned, Magda gave All the Birds in the Sky to me by Charlie Jane Anders and Paige gave me both The Song Rising and The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. So this is perfect because <laughs> I am reading a lot with Paige this month and these are both from her. Hey, it's Editing Amy here. I completely forgot to mention that Chicken a la King and the Buffalo Wing was a gift from my friend Jan. So she sends us these big care packages every year. And I think last year or the year before, this was in there for me because she knows that I like books like this or I like learning about stuff like this. So it was a really fun gift. And thank you, Jan. Another challenge that I've been trying to do, a monthly challenge, that I don't know if I've been the most successful at, but this is genre -thon hosted by Whitney from Tipper's Den. And I really love this because it's trying to get you out of your comfort zone with some of the genres that you read. And so for the month of July, it's adventure books or travel books. Now I don't necessarily have any difficulty reading adventure travel books, although maybe they don't get onto my TBR as much as I'd like. The book that I'm going with is Life on the Mississippi by Mark Twain, because this is definitely a travel and adventure book, because it's all about his experiences aboard the steamboat. And of course, there's A Year in Aldea, which is the choose your own adventure style monthly challenge that G from Book Roast has set up for the Aurelium world. <laughs> it's kind of a world now at this point. So I haven't finished June's book. As I mentioned before, it's going to be Remains the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. And this is for the prompt Visit a Wizard Tower. I don't know if you can see that, but it's Visit a Wizard Tower to read a book that has a prologue. So I'm planning on going there for June. And then for July, both of these trails lead down to here, which is Pocket a Scroll of Light Summons, read a book when it's light outside. So any of the books that I'm reading during the daytime that I continue to read throughout the whole day will work for this. So that's gonna be pretty easy and I'm not picking a specific book for this one at this point. That's all for my challenges and it does seem very doable. However, I have recently started these six books because these are my books for my Aurelium Summer Equinox and I'm doing a special little series with these that I'm very excited about. But it does mean that these will be carried over into July and will take up a portion of my July's reading. <laughs> so that makes the TBR seem a lot more daunting. <laughs> but I can't wait to share what I've done with these. It's a rather inspired idea. I was inspired by someone else. So stay tuned and that first vlog will come up, I think at the end of this week. Now it's time for the viewer prompt. So let's see where you're gonna go on your journey through the game of a bookish life. It's a very exciting time of the month. It's time to find out what the viewer spin is going to be. And the last time I did this, which was quite a while ago, you had landed on Buy Thrift Book and we picked a letter. I don't remember what the letter is at this point. But that's where we ended off. And we're gonna see how far you're gonna get today in your journey of the game of a bookish life. Two, not very far. One, two, a genre spinner wheel. Not too bad. One. Oh, middle grade. As simple as that. You get to read a middle grade. Okay, so this wasn't too bad. It's a pretty easy one to fulfill. It's a spinner wheel and you got genre. So for this, it was middle grade because we landed on a yellow. I wanna give a recommendation. I used to give a lot more recommendations when it came to the viewer prompt, but then my videos got too long. <laughs> so I started cutting back. However, I want to talk about a book that I recently read, and I haven't given a review of this book yet. So here's my review. Five star, middle grade, graphic novel, absolutely loved it, and I recommend it. It's one of those books that my students all love, and so they were like, you have to read it, you have to read it, and I finally got a chance to read it while they were doing testing. <laughs> it was a really endearing one, and it really made me think, and I loved the characters. I thought the character development was really great, and of course the graphic art style was was wonderful. It was wonderful. And our main character is an artist. So he incorporates his art within the story. And I like that little twist. This is called New Kid by Jerry Craft. And as you see here, we've got Jordan. He's going into the seventh grade. And his mom wants him to go to this really prestigious private school, which he's not excited about because he wanted to go to art school. But 
she wants opportunities for him because they live in a community that's a lot less wealthy than the people that are going to this private school. And so she wants him to experience this world where he'll have a lot more opportunity. So throughout this book, we're getting to see the ways that he's interacting with the people at this new school. It is difficult because he's one of few students of color at the school. And so he's dealing with a lot of microaggressions and he often draws about his experiences. And so you get these little snippets, these little stories about the things he's facing in this new school. And then also within his life, because he's trying to figure out how to make where he he comes from, the life he lives in this other neighborhood, mesh with the life that he's now leading at this prestigious school. So I thought it was really great. I can't wait to read the next one. I've heard it's not quite as five star as the first one, but I'm excited about reading it anyways because I really like these characters. So I recommend that because I think more people should be reading it. It's really great and the kids love it. So if you want to give a recommendation to a middle grade reader or, you know, somebody who is 10, 11, this is a perfect read for them. So that's how my July is going to look and I'm very excited for it. I have a feeling this is going to be a great reading month. So keep your fingers crossed for me and let me know in the comment section down below what of these books you have read and what you thought about them. Were they great? Should I be excited? Am I <laughs> gonna be eeks? <laughs> and also let me know what you ended up choosing for the viewer prompt. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see what happens when I make it through July because I've got a lot of fun videos planned and I'd like you to see them. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I will see you later. Bye. All right, it's time for Magda's spins, and I doubt she's going to get quite as lucky as I got, because <laughs> I did really well this time. So we'll see how Magda goes. Let's talk about her spin tallies, and this is why I don't think she's going to do quite as, <laughs> why she's going to get quite as lucky. So she's in trouble if she lands on a five, an eight, or a ten, because there's four tallies on each of those. There are also three tallies each on four, six, and seven. Two tallies on number three and one, and one tally on number two. So that is a rough board. <laughs> it's a rough board. But she ended the last game on what are they reading? So let's see how far she's gonna go in this round. With spin number one. And Magda normally does five spins. Six. Whew, that gives you four tallies on number six, Magda. Okay, let's see where six takes you. One, two, three, four, five, six. A book card! Magda always gets the book cards. I never seem to get the book card. Oh, and there goes everything. <laughs> there goes some book cards. Flying book cards! Okay, okay, okay. We'll go with this one. Book card says... You pick! Oh, interesting. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is that you you are going to pick books that you think Magda should read. Maybe they're books that you love and they should be audiobooks. Maybe they're the best audiobooks you've listened to and you just think everybody should be reading them. And so you're gonna put in the comment section down below what audiobook you think Magda would enjoy the most. She's very open to genres. I would just give her whatever you think is a great audiobook and she will go through and see what she hasn't read yet and pick from that. So thank you for participating. You get to pick everyone another book card that fell out. I didn't even realize. <laughs> I'm losing book cards. Okay, let's see where Magda's gonna go for spin number two. Four. Four is safe, but that gives you four tallies on four. Ooh, Magda, you're getting scary. One, two, three, four. Another buy thrift book letter generator. So, now, Magda doesn't buy actual physical books, so what we'll do is it'll be a Magda pick. She can pick whatever book she wants, but I will pick the letter with a letter generator, and Magda has to pick a book that has a title that starts with that letter. Okay, so I pulled up a random letter generator, and the letter we came up with was M for Magda. Let's see where she's gonna go for spin number three. Seven. Seven is safe, but you have so many numbers that have four tallies on them, Magda. I just, this does not look good at all. Okay, Whew. let's see where you go for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Buy a new book. Why do you keep landing on these? Magda's not going to buy a new book. So <laughs> maybe we turn that into Amy Pick. Yeah, I like Amy Picks. So this is going to be an Amy Pick. <laughs> 
because I get to decide, right? So we've got what I'm considering an Amy's pick <laughs> because it's my game. It's my rules. I can do whatever the heck I want here. <laughs> I have decided to go with the other Bennett sister, and I'm hoping you can get this on audiobook Magda. I really hope you can, by Janice Hadlow. This is one that I really want to read. I've been looking forward to this book for a long time, and I do know that you love Jane Austen. And this is all about Mary. And mom read it recently, and she loved it. She really, really loved it. I think you gave it five stars. Yeah, she gave it five stars. And so I think you're gonna enjoy this. Let us know if you're able to get it and this is what you end up choosing. How lucky do you feel, Magda? Because you have six numbers that have four tallies on it. <laughs> Let's see where Magda's gonna go for a spin. Number four. Two. Oh, you're safe. How is this happening? How is this happening? One, two, a Goodreads winner, by genre. So let's spin the wheel and see what genre you're gonna get. Middle grade. Okay, so basically it's gonna be one of the Rick Riordan books because <laughs> he's won everything except this last year. I don't think he won this last year, but it does actually need to be one of the Goodreads winners. If that doesn't work though, Magda, in this instance, especially because the winners have mostly been Rick Riordan. I would say pick one of the books that has been nominated for the Middle Grade Goodreads Award. All right, here we go. Spin number five. Where things go downhill. <laughs> yep, that's an extra spin, Magda. Let's see. Now, number five is a book card. One, two, three, four, five. Whenever the spinner wheel lands on a five, it is a book card choice. Yeah, because I wasn't getting enough book card pulls <laughs> last year. So we'll see what we're getting for a book card for Amanda. Okay. Oldest on TBR. So Magda, go onto your Goodreads and look at the oldest book that you want to read on there. The one that has been on your TBR the longest and read that one. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Spin number six. Seven. Oh, yep. Yeah. Nope. That's an extra spin, Magda. That's an extra spin. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go seven spaces, but I need to check and see which direction we're going. One through five, we go to the left. Six through ten, we go to the right. We are going to the left. So seven spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Giveaway. Winner chooses. That only works for my spins. <laughs> Magda's really liking these blue spaces. I'm making stuff up as I go. Okay, well, what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna pull from my Koi Cup. Whatever I end up picking from my Koi Cup, which are books on my physical TBR that I either really want to read right away or they're easier books to read. If Magda has already read it or she can't get a hold of it on audiobook, then she gets to pick whatever she wants. But let's hope this is a good choice for her. This one right here. Oh, there's two there. We'll go with this one. Oh, I don't know if you've read this yet, Magda. The Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. This is a great choice. I hope you haven't read it and that it works out well for you. If this is not the one you're gonna be reading, Magda, let us know in the comment section down below what you'll read instead. Okay, spin number seven. Three. Three is safe, Magda, that is your last, well, we say that, but we never know. I could always add plus one. Let's see. One, two, three. What are they reading? You're ending up on the same thing you ended up on last time. How funny. Okay, let me pull my what are they reading jar. I have another pot. This is my little pot that has many different booktubers names in here. A lot of different booktubers. And let's see what booktuber Magda's gonna have to choose a favorite book from. This one feels lucky right here, right here, yep. Joanna Souza, okay. So I decided to help Magda out by going onto Joanna Souza's channel and checking out the possibilities on one of her recent top 10 books of 2022. And for this, the book that I thought Magda might really enjoy, and that I've actually recommended to somebody else before, even though I haven't read it yet, <laughs> is The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. This is all about bone magic. I've heard such great things about this series and I hope you're able to get it on audiobook, Magda. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it because this is one that I'm really anticipating and I'm hoping that I can get to it at some point. 
and I haven't really heard anything negative about it. Maybe more about the second book in the series, but not the first one. The first one is pretty well loved. Just so everybody remembers, Magda will come back and put her choices for all these prompts in the comment section down below. So please come back and see what she ends up choosing. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.